Hey, uh, cool guys. Uh, let's start. So I'll be talking about uh, FHE rollups. Why are they on Bitcoin not possible? And maybe arguing about like what can we do, what or what we have done to make them possible. So yeah, a little about the Encipher team. My name is Rishabh, and I have Nitanshu with me over here. So we have like, worked extensively with uh, zk and other cryptographic pr uh, primitives for the past two three years and learned a lot. Earlier, we have worked with companies like Polygon, Ava Polygon Maiden, Avail, and build like ZK projects for them, ZK rollups, worked on ZK rollups, proof aggregation, and ZK fully on-chain games, and a lot of uh, cryptography things. So yeah, we have also worked with uh, account abstraction earlier. But yeah, right now, we are working on a Bitcoin layer 2, which is using FHE. And yeah, let's get into it. So here's a very rough time, uh, rough uh, things that we are going to cover in this talk. The first one is like the overview of rollups, like how are rollups looking in the Ethereum space and how should they look in the Bitcoin space. The second one is uh, the components, basically explaining like how they need to be tweaked on the bit for the Bitcoin uh, layer twos, the execution, settlement, and the data availability part. That are the three components, and. There will be different design construction dis uh, discussions, like optimistic, ZK, and pessimistic constructions that are possible for now nowadays for the rollups out there. And a disclaimer: uh, this is something uh, for an ongoing research, and we are uh, heavily iterating over the ideas that we have over here. So yeah, if you have any doubts or you know anything is wrong, just point it out to us. Cool. So I guess most of the folks will be knowing this, but yeah, a little primer on what a rollup is and what are the different things that it uh, varies with the sidechain aspect that are there uh, in the Bitcoin space also. So a rollup is basically when you take the transactions from the main chain, take it outside on an off-chain execution environment, execute them, put the data on chain, and make sure that those transactions are correct, and you prove to the L1 in some or the other way manner, on some cryptographic way, some cryptonomic way, that yeah, these transactions have been executed. Nothing very fancy. It's just like a output. It's just like another function or the EVM outside the EVM, where you execute a bunch of transactions to increase the transaction speed and lower the transaction costs. So yeah, that's a very high level definition of rollups. You can find a bunch of material on chain, uh, online, I guess, on this. But yeah, uh, why do we need a rollup? And why do they look like chains like Plasma, side chains, all of them you know, uh, could serve the purpose of the increasing the execution speed. But rollup basically provides the trust guarantees that are necessary for the user to you know, uh, uh, in a trustless may manner, interact with the blockchain. You can verify the, uh, you know, reconstruct your blockchain with the data availability layer. You can uh, basically trust the bridging part that's there in the rollup. So many uh, good things about a rollup are there, which makes them better with the sidechain aspect. And yeah, this is a diagram which I stole from uh, the Optimism team, and uh, they basically so show that the rollup is not a very big thing. Uh, people say that it's a very big thing and uh, a lot of things are going. But yeah, uh, it's a simple function, as I say, out, outside the EVM, which executes the things. So moving forward. So these are the different components, just going through over them, like uh, so that we all are on the same page when we get deep into it. Uh, the first one is the execution. The second one is the data availability. And the settlement is the last one. So going over the execution, basically, it means that the environment in which you are executing the trans the user is inter uh, executing his transactions on uh, currently we are working on the evm execution environment but it can be any alt vm also which you the user can use or anyone can design upon uh, data availability as you might know there has been a lot of noise around the data availability part the modular ecosystem has grown a lot uh, the user wants to you know make sure that the data that's getting posted was first posted on the l1 uh, is now posted on some other layer because of the modular nature it's available the user can take the data and reconstruct the final state of the rollup with that data and the settlement is basically the base layer which provides the security for the rollup so rollup is uh, basically inheriting everything the security aspect from the base layer because of the crypto economic security which the L1 has in terms of the stakes or the nodes that are providing to it. In terms of Bitcoin, it's like uh, the 1.5 trillion Bitcoin that's out there and the miners who are mining out it. So yeah, I guess uh, this, these are the things, these are text things that I just said. But uh, 
the, uh, talking about the execution and the DA part of the bit, uh, roll up on Bitcoin. Uh, for the execution, it's not very that uh, difficult, I'll say, because uh, what we can do is we have many execution environments out there. We can take, uh, for example, opget and then try to integrate the FHE primitives, which uh, we are using Zama for the TFHE library and the TFHE Go library, basically to integrate in, inside the pre-compiles and then we get the f functionality as it was earlier mentioned during the presentation. We can en enable smart contracts to have encrypted states with the FHE EVM Soul uh, library. So users can design uh, encrypted applications. And the data availability part is something which we can use different DA layers right now. Uh, Avail is there, Newbit is there, and many others are there. So you can take that part and usually uh, design it. The settlement is something which uh, is can be done via three things, but there are different uh, you know assumptions over here and different trust guarantees with every assumption. So yeah, I guess here are the things that get interesting. So uh, thanks Rizzo, for giving me the opportunity to, to cover the interesting stuffs. So like uh, as previously Rishabh mentioned that execution and DA is sort of like already sorted. For execution, we are sort of already forget an integrated FHE focus pre-compile using FHEM Go library. Similarly for DA, we have like modular solutions, DA layers, avail, new bait, etc. But what about settlement? So like there are the existing ways of settlements like which we can, which we kind of like uh, which are like are on top of my mind, are sort of like adopted by the community right now. We have like three. Is first is you like you verify the role of validity proof from L1. So basically, like while executing, generate validity proof and sort of like verify those validity proof of uh, on L1 itself. And second is it like just set an on L1, wait for seven day period, and let's wait for any on a, any malicious validator to maybe uh, on any honest validator to sort of like challenge a particular state transition. That is optimistic construction. And the third one is like the pessimistic rollups, where we could be basically just re-execute a transaction and verify that this particular transaction has actually taken place and the state the output state corresponding to this particular transaction is correct. So these are like three naive ways of like sort of like settling rollups on top of any L1. But the things get interesting because like L1 is Bitcoin over here. So let's just try to figure out what are the settlement uh, sort of like options possible if we want to build a rollup on top for Bitcoin and how can we settle a uh, rollup state on Bitcoin. Yeah, so like, so basically if you want to construct a ZK rollup, so basically you have constructed a ZK rollup, you have a ZK AVM, let's say, you got a validity proof. Now let's do one thing, like let's just use Bitcoin scripting language and let's just write a verifier on Bitcoin script, right? So, but unfortunately that's not possible because there are like lots of limitation. Bitcoin inherently have like UTXO based model. So you don't have like state transfer, you can't manage a certain state on Bitcoin. Additionally, the SAC input size is 1000 input, which we are not happy, happy with because like if you go on a very, if you, if you want to verify like let's say gross 16 proof or maybe FF long or modified long proof, you need a lot more than that. And additionally, like there's no integer multiplication possible right now. OPML opcode is not there. And unfortunately, OPCAD is yet to be sort of like decided. And yeah, Starknet team is working, is pushing OPCAD really hard. And probably will soon be having OPCAD integration. If we would be having like OPCAD integration, then in that case, it would be really beneficial for us to sort of like verify uh, circle stack proof on Bitcoin and build ZK rollers on top of it. But that's still not yet possible. And yeah, the script size is only 4 MB, so you can't exceed this particular script size. So unfortunately, proof verification on Bitcoin, at least at this point of time, is not possible. So yeah, so like, uh, so we have, we have explored the naive path. Uh, now let's come to BitVM, which is basically sort of like, and not an optimization, it's just a way of doing things differently, basically. So with BitVM, we have sort of like got a flexibility that we can basically transfer a state from one script to another script. And further, we have like optimization on BitVM itself, which is like BitVM2 and SnarkNado. With BitVM2, which is an optimization over BitVM, and it basically enables anyone to sort of like challenge a particular commitment. 
and yeah so basically like uh, in bit vm we, fo we follow certain bisection protocol in case if a challenger wants to sort of like challenge a particular commitment but in bit vm2 we sort of like uh, a particular a particular operator which is basically verifying the proof of chain sort of like commits the intermediate steps of verification on chain on bitcoin itself and which basically reduces the number of rounds which challenger and the proposer who actually uh, verified the proof have to play to sort of like uh, get to a conclusion that this particular commitment which i posted on bitcoin is correct further we have like uh, another uh, another amazing optimization by snarknado which basically sort of like aligns with NARC, it's not, and it again is an optimization over the existing BitVM. In BitVM, the challenge response rounds were larger, but with SnarkNado, it basically introduces, uh, yeah, interactive uh, Oracle proofs, basically, which is sort of like, uh, if, if you have worked with Gross16 and if you have worked with Plong, you might be, you might be knowing. But unfortunately, like SnarkNado uh, currently doesn't support permissionless challenging. There should be a set of challenger which you have to sort of like predefine while uh, compiling your SnarkNado circuit. So yeah, so BitVM is nice. It enables proof verification. We have like certain optimization BitVM2 and uh, SnarkNado as we had discussed. But uh, can, at this point of time, can we generate proofs for FHE operation? If we are able to sort of like generate proof for a Bitcoin operation, we can use BitVM in some manner to sort of like build a ZK rollup on top of Bitcoin. Although that particular rollup will still be optimistic because even after verifying the proof on Bitcoin, we are sort of like relying in the optimistic uh, assumption that this, the, the verification which has been done by an operator is correct. So that, that's the thing. But unfortunately, at this point of time, we don't have like proof for FHE operation. So now let's explore that what all other alternatives we have and let's try to dig down into it. Yeah, so like let's talk about some common limitations why we can't generate proof for FHE operation. Like these are like uh, a very common limitation. There are like <laughs> lots of other, but I don't wanna get into that. So like FHE, as we all know, like since we are uh, FHE enthusiasts sitting over here, relies on lattice-based cryptography, which most GKP doesn't. Most GKP works on elliptic curves. And secondly, like TFHE uses modulus 2 to the power 64, which basically just, at least for now, just forms a ring. There are certain snark constructions like Renocchio, but they are not optimized enough to sort of like create proof for TFHE, at least for now. And uh, FHE operation in general are quite expensive. We already are familiar with bootstrapping operation, which is not like one of the most expensive operation yet. So generating proof of such operation in a constrained environment is pretty difficult and pretty infeasible. So yeah, but uh, we don't have to worry about that because like the uh, development in this particular space is happening quite rapidly. There is Greco, which basically like enables you to generate proof for valid BFE ciphertext. There is VFHE. I think like uh, one of the team, one of the internal team from Zama itself work on VFHE, where they tried proving the bootstrapping operation using incredibly verified computation, and the circuit was written in Plonky too. Further, there are like certain researches going around if we are able to sort of like generate proof for FHA operation in ZKVM system, because as we know that there's a, there's a huge fight going on, going in the ZKVM domain, and each day we are seeing there's certain ZKVM sort of like bypassing the other another's benchmark. So in future we may be having certain ZKVMs which basically enables us to get the proof of FHA operations. So yeah, like uh, we came to the conclusion that at this point of time. Unfortunately, it's not possible to generate uh, validity proofs, but seeing the advancements by uh, the ZKVMs, certain, certain, certain optimization and Sama teams itself, uh, probably will be having the proofs for FHA operation one day. Definitely, that would be soon enough. Yeah, so uh, the validity proof path is gone. The now we can't have like ZK rollups, which are with ZK FHA rollup basically on top of Bitcoin. So what all other options we have right now? So another option we sort of like explored is the pessimistic verification, where what you are doing is like uh, once the block has been produced by the rollup validator, we have a set of like a verifier network, which basically just re-execute the block and sort of like vote on it. Does this particular block is correct or not? 
so in this in this type of network firstly we have to sort of like bootstrap this network and this network in itself should have some additional security parameters and those security parameters now our rollup would be inheriting the security parameters of this verification network itself and re-executing blocks is again like it's an infeasible operation and it basically like defies the core concept of why at all we are building rollup. We are building rollup because we want execution to be done off chain and in a seamless manner and the fastest possible manner. So and additionally, like uh, when we think of pessimistic verification, just re-executing a block and seeing that uh, and think that like okay, this block is correct. So this this is some this is some uh, this is some architecture which is sort of like similar to sidechain. So we are not actually building a rollup. We, we are actually building some form of sidechain which have which has its own certain infrastructure to sort of like validate its own blocks. So we didn't go with this approach as well. So the third approach which we are left is, is like optimistic approach. So there are like certain fraud proof implementations, like the, uh, there are a few. And the most famous ones are like the Canon, uh, Canon implementation by Optimism team. And another is like bold implementation by Arbitrum team. So in both of this uh, fraud proof uh, mechanisms for proof implementation. The one thing which is very common is like like both of the protocols rely on the dissection, uh, and during dissection they sort of like try to figure out at which part, at which point of time or at which particular state uh, the honest validator and the malicious validator are sort of like uh, behaving maybe or sort of like not agreeing to. And uh, in optimism, which basically have like missed or sold contract, which basically does that re-execution stuff with that last particular step. And in Arbitrum Bold, we just have a sort of like a Wasm emulator because in Arbitrum, the challenger node is written in Wasm and it basically does the dissection process over the Wasm instructions itself. So in Bi Arbitrum, we have like Wasm emulator deployed on chain, which basically sort of like uh, performs the large step on chain on the L1 itself, and finally resolves the dispute. Yeah. So uh, regarding the uh, optimistic construction, we sort of like uh, explored a few areas. But before moving uh, further, let me just give you a brief about Babel on chain. You must be knowing it. It's just uh, a primer, like because we are we, because we are sort of like exploring this area as well for optimistic construction. So basically, Babel on chain is uh, as a Cosmos SDK chain, which is like uh, built on Babylon protocol, and it with with the 0 0.7.1 upgrade, it basically enables anyone to deploy Cosmos Wasm awesome contracts, and these contracts are uh, sort of like Turing complete contracts. And Babylon chain is actually run by Babylon node, where Babylon node has actually sort of like staked on top of Bitcoin via Babylon protocol itself. Yeah, so so uh, this is a primer about Babylon chain. So one sort of like one solution which we can explore right now is basically implementing interactive fraud proofs the way Arbitrum guys have did it. Basically, we can implement interactive fraud proof. We can deploy the challenge manager contract on Babylon chain itself, and the off-chain challenge manager contract uh, node will be running off-chain, which, which will basically dissect the batches. And once the part, once the honest validator and the malicious validator sort of like reach to a particular step where they are sort of like disagreeing, we can run the Wasm emulator in the Cosm Wasm contract itself and settle it on Babylon. So yeah, so this is uh, one thing which we can do because we can like anyways compile FHA get into Wasm and run Wasm instructions. So this is one step, but again like there are limitations with this uh, approach. The few limitations which are like uh, currently uh, the rollup which we have built with this optimistic construction relies on the security of Babylon chain itself. We are not uh, sort of like trusting the security of Bitcoin itself as of now. We are sort of like inheriting the security from Babylon chain and Babylon chain itself inherits the security from Bitcoin. And second, like the fraud proof won't be secure if the TBL of our rollup which we have built on top of Babylon chain is increased than the Babylon chain node itself, the total stake which Babylon chain nodes have on Bitcoin. And again, like if the Babylon chain goes down, the fraud proof goes down, and then it won't be a rollup anymore. So yeah, uh, this were a few explorations we did. 
regarding building a feature rollups on top of uh, Bitcoin. But we are still exploring certain like other settlement areas, whether we would be able to sort of like use BitVM itself to enable fraud proof, and there are certain other things we are still exploring. But this was the work we sort of like uh, tried presenting today. Thanks, thanks guys. Yeah, any questions, like, if you have? Uh, first of all, apologies. I, I really wanted to get the entire uh, speech, but I, I missed it, the beginning of it. So maybe this is a little bit redundant and I apologize in advance. But I'm super interested in what you guys are doing. I think it's awesome. By the way, congratulations that you guys are so early into this field. Um, but you mentioned something very interesting that is close to the research that I'm doing myself, which is BitVM. And I just wanted to understand a little bit more, if you could, um, your, your potential dependence on it. And if you have any other potential routes in case that doesn't work for you, for instance, if there are any sort of similar tools that would potentially do the same thing that you want to do, the BitVM would do for you. Does that make sense? Uh, okay, so basically the question is like, is there any another tools which basically enables us to do what bit we are trying to do with BitVM? Yeah. Right. Actually, like uh, in Bitcoin, I think like it's BitVM itself. Like the people are trying to optimize over BitVM. We have BitVM2, we have Snark Nido. But for enabling state transfer and performing like uh, arbitrary compute on Bitcoin, currently we have like the BitVM. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. For me, it's a pretty new topic. The question is like, what would be the real world use? real-world use case, who would, uh, like, what kind of business would benefit from the technology th that you're working on? Yeah, so as you know that Bitcoin right now doesn't have programmability, right? With the layer 2, the, it's coming uh, out there. So most of the Bitcoin is not getting used. So we can build DeFi applications with uh, Encypher that are having encrypted state on chain. And with that encrypted state, you can compute different kinds of de build different kinds of DeFi application. So the whole point of using like the DeFi space in Bitcoin is still not explored, and this primitive can enable that to you know for developers to come and build those kind of applications. I understand your development interest I, as well. I'm also the developer, so I, I'm always interested in developing new stuff. Uh, I'm trying to go from another side, from the side of businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see demand from businesses to build their DeFi solutions that are like somehow connected to Bitcoin, not to Ethereum, to Binance Smart Chain? to Polygon, yep. uh, Solana, Tron, so there are a lot of blockchains. Yeah. So the, but the major liquidity that's not unlocked still is in the Bitcoin space. And those people are having DeFi solutions. We have talked to several users in the Bitcoin space who are interested in this kind of solution. So I guess users are the most important thing that I, we are focusing right now. Uh, developers will come along the way so that they can build stuff which can serve the users. So basically, your idea is that you don't see like the demand right now, but there is a lot of Bitcoin, uh, a lot of TVL. Lot no, there is demand from the users. We have talked to them and they are interested in this kind of thing because they are holding a lot of Bitcoin and that is not getting used at all. Yeah, I see. Thank you. Hey. Um, yeah, I also apologize for coming in late. Um, also, I apologize for my ignorance, um, but are you guys just researching this, or are you actually building something? So, like, uh, definitely, we are sort of like uh, building POCs. We are build, uh, and 
probably will be launching uh, devnet as well next month but uh, we are still researching on the like what's the best possible way to settle for an optimistic roll up currently like for now we will be will most probably will moving with the web launch and approach until we find a concrete uh, solution to sort of like settle on top of bitcoin yeah okay that's cool thanks yeah Thank you. Hey, so I'm wondering if your L1 is built on the Babylon chain or like how do you guys interact with Babylon chain? So our L2 is sort of like inheriting the security for now from the Babylon chain itself. Ah, uh, so your L2 on Babylon chain. Yeah. Babylon chain is also on a top of layer. Bitcoin. Yeah, so that's another part that I try to figure out like the how does the Babylon chain inherit the security from. Uh, Bitcoin. Yeah. So basically, like Babylon chain is another like Cosmos or CK chain, and the nodes which are basically running Babylon chain have already staked on top of Bitcoin. Uh, sorry, I didn't get it. So you said a uh, Babylon chain has some specific uh, Babylon chain nodes. Yeah. Which ba is basically so basically, the like Bitcoin for Bitcoin nodes. Yeah. They're, Bitcoin. they're like a mining nodes, right? So that's no, why no, they uh, read that, the ledger and mm. uh, update the information towards the Babylon chain, or what? No, no, no. Babylon chain have like. the specific nodes which have basically like staked so the way ethereum works like mm. the, we have validator which have which have like staked 32 it mm. we, we can basically slash uh, uh, 32 it can be slash in case like if they perform something in the malicious manner the same way there is babylon chain we have like babylon nodes so which have staked on top of bitcoin and that bitcoin is slashable if they perform some incorrect activity on babylon chain So Babylon nodes is not a, the uh, BTC mining nodes. Yeah, the, are, they are not. The, they are not the BTC mining they're nodes. They're special nodes reading the state from um, Bitcoin chain and updating the yeah. state to the Babylon chain. Yeah. Then how do we trust the, the Babylon nodes then? Trust Babylon nodes as in? Yeah, because Babylon nodes essentially like a messaging a messenger relayer, right? They extract the message from a uh, Bitcoin chain and update it to the Babylon chain, right? So that's how this uh, POS based the Babylon chain claim they can inherit the security from a uh, UTXO based the uh, Bitcoin chain, right? But then how do we trust those Babylon chain nodes then because if something happened to them, the the whole security system like the assumption doesn't hold. Yeah, like there are like Definitely, the limitation which you have just showed with Babylon, or there, are, there is that that particular limitation. So we are still like ideating on it. We are still trying to explore other solution, other settlement options. Yeah, but this is the limitation like we still have, at least right now. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just, just one last question. Um, you mentioned that on Babylon, if Somebody cheats. Basically, they can slash Bitcoin. Is this correct? Uh, yeah, they are like we talk to them. They are claiming that, but it's still not implemented yet. Uh, the double signing part is implemented. I guess implemented. The double signing part is implemented uh, regarding the general conditions for slashability. It's still to come on the Babylon part. So, what what are they waiting for? <laughs> I guess the development is underway, so they are developing it right now. In a trustless way. uh in a trust what do you mean by trustless way i mean like so to be able to slash someone mm -hmm. you, you someone has to hold it right someone needs custody of this so i guess the, hmm. no no yeah, go so i'm just asking like on on babylon do you have to give away your bitcoin to another party and that's how uh, they i guess uh, the nodes have staked on the bitcoin the, their bitcoin is staked on uh, on the bitcoin layer and uh, that is slashed uh, on the l1 the the slashing is not done on the babylon chain if they perform maliciously uh, it's slashed on the bitcoin layer uh, maybe we can like confirm this once again and we'll get yeah. back to okay, it yeah okay cool cuz i like just the way i see it like mm -hmm. at this point i think everybody is just waiting for opcat and other opcrods um yeah. like e even the bitvm guys um i've just seen a kind of like shit like this is going to be very clunky um but yeah Let's let's talk later. Sure, sure. Thank you guys.